All right, welcome to Roleplay R and D, the next season. I guess it's season five, Maggie. How many seasons of R and D have we done? Oh my gosh, don't make me have. To we count. did. Wait, wait, wait. We did Apocalypse World, Dungeon World, Numenera, Pendragon, and now made Sagas RPG. of the Icelanders. Oh, made RPG. Okay, yeah, this is totally season. And there, six. He, he gave it to you guys. Now you know what we're playing. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and Give also, away. There, there's a big, awesome yeah. card here showing you everything that we're playing. It's Sagas of the Icelanders. I'm super, super stoked about it. I really can't wait. I've been, like, watching Vikings a whole lot recently and, like, reading up on Icelandic culture. So I'm super stoked. But, like, you she know, so first, good. let's, let's like, meet our cast, right? Like, first, you, some of you at home may be wondering where JP is. JP is actually right here. Hi, JP! He's running, he's running production behind the scenes for us so that uh, we could get Shannon into the show as well as uh, Krender. So, yeah, as um, you can tell, JP has a lot of he uh, made great horrible production mistakes. quality. What? Yeah, yeah. Uh, horrible mistakes. It yeah. lets him really focus on making sure things go smoothly. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> he's going to kill me. Maggie's still got the price um, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess, apparently. <laughs> It's, you know, it's a relic. It's really old. <laughs> an, ancient, an ancient relic. <laughs> it was a gift, so I don't know. <laughs> that's that's amazing. That's funny. So yeah, of- like, um, who who all's with us? Maggie, do you want to tell us what you've been up to recently? Sure, I've been streaming on Twitch. Actually, I've been really sick this week, so I haven't oh, been streaming boo. as much. But um, I actually have been streaming quite a bit, Monday through Friday, starting at eight PM every day. Although I think JP also starts then, so. <laughs> Make your decision and choose wisely. No, just mm. kidding. Um, you could just multi Twitch, multi Twitch. Yeah, every... you can do multi multi Twitch. And then I've just been making videos on the internets. You made one recently, like how to spot a gamer, right? Yes, I did. How long? How long is the cycle from like making the video to it actually being released? Can we ask? Um, it depends on the video, but for something like that, that's a little bit more production. It's like we took like two days to record everything, and then editing, you know, that can be anywhere from one to two days. And that was originally supposed to be something we were supposed to work with Hot Pockets on, but we ended up not. You work <laughs> so, with Hot Pockets, Maggie? You work with Hot Pockets? Whoa. Yeah, we, they've been sponsoring some of our videos, so. Call awesome. me Hot Pockets. <laughs> I will work with you. And by work with, I mean eat. I don't even think we get Hot and Pockets work. in the UK. They didn't give us Hot Pockets, but they gave us Hot Pockets to, give to other people. Uh, I could could you have each given them to each other and been like, oh, would you like some hot pockets? Yes. Would I like some? Ho- I would like some hot pockets. No, I don't think so. Because yeah. it was part of the agreement that we were giving away, like a free lifetime thing of hot oh. pockets, plus also like a new PC and like a bunch of stuff. I tweeted about a hot it. Hot pockets oh. PC? You got a hot pockets PC? Is like <laughs> is the tower like you know decorated? No, it wasn't a Hot Pockets PC. <laughs> Is there like a that microwave inside of it? I was so... <laughs> like a USB God. microwave? A USB, yeah. a USB microwave. microwave? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. <laughs> you turn it on, it's like, Hot Pockets. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. The, yeah, the, com- the computer actually ma- microwaves the Hot Pockets for you. That would be amazing. No, it's just, it's just an alienware The actually gets heart disease PC. at 35 years old. <laughs> It like, it, like, waits it for, for you to have been playing on the computer for long enough that it knows you're hungry, and it's it just like, automatically oh, you're hungry. spits out a Hot Pocket. Here's a Hot Pocket. Boop. Awesome. Um, I, speaking of tweeting about things, Maggie, like, what's Dead of Winter? I saw you playing that, like, oh. board game with a couple friends, right? It is. It's, it's, it is it's a board game. I, Yeah, we recently became friends with a few people in town here who are board gamers, so we're like... We've been doing that once a week, and it's super fun. I've been playing a lot of games that I've never played before. I've always wanted to, and I saw Dead of Winter actually at GDC, and it's like a zombie apocalypse type of game where you are playing as a group, but it's kind of like mafia style because there's a possibility somebody's a betrayer, but there's a possibility no one's a betrayer, and like every you have like a certain amount of rounds that you have to get through, and there's like a there's a whole bunch of shit that has to go on within those rounds. It's it's difficult when you set it up the first time, but once mm-hmm. you get it yeah. down, you're like, oh, I got this. This is not as hard as it seems. Nice. But the first time you play, you're just like, this is overwhelming. There's a lot of things on this board. Is this table even big enough to fit all these things on it? I don't know. I feel but like that I actually a lot, had a lot when of fun I play playing. board games. Good. Very cool. Um, let's let's go to our other returning member now, uh, Jesse. What's That's been going on time. with you, man? It's been a while since I've like talked to you. It's been like what, like four months since we too last, long. like too six long. months. It's it has been too long. Like okay, Jesse. First thing I want to ask you about now that uh-huh. you've returned to the role play table, tell me what's up with Stellar Lotus, man. 
Oh, uh, I have an esports team now. I no shit. I I I pay money to have other people play video games for me, and hopefully they win. Man, or that's else the life. Waste the money. That's the life. <laughs> that's the dream. Everybody dreams of paying other people money. Wait. Yeah. I think you might have this backwards, Jesse. I know. I think I goofed. Um. Yeah. No. I really, I really like uh, Heroes of the Storm, and it just started, and it's not even out yet, and so I wanted in on the potential esports game before it started, and so then it jump in early. The first to ever win on stage at BlizzCon. Yes. Yeah, it's true. As yeah. as one of the first, as the captain of the first team ever to win in Heroes of the Storm, I feel like. Uh, it's my responsibility to the community to lead a group of young people from, let's say, the gutter to um, uh, celebrity status. Uh, help them get all of the fangirls possible and and uh, money. I cannot promise any of those things, <laughs> but that's the goal. Well, that sounds really exciting, Jesse. I think that's really cool. I can't Thank wait you to for see lying. how it goes. I, 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 <laughs> did, I did see. I, I, I'm, pr I'm practicing. Uh -huh. I feel like. Very good. Uh, so I good. feel like if I get good enough, I could maybe host like a Heroes of the Storm event or like start an esports team. Then I, you know, then I'd be. Don't don't do. Or become oh. a politician. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, good. Glad glad you're with us, Jesse. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, buddy. <laughs> it's nice to be back. Let's hear from uh, a returning role play member, but uh, not returning to R and D. Her first visit here, Shannon. Me. How are you? I am great. It's um, exciting it to have you here. Yeah, I am super excited. It's currently one a.m., so I'm like really hyped for you know these awesome late nights every couple of weeks that can. Yeah. Give me the good excuse that trooper. I slept in until 2 p.m. the next day. Well, that wasn't my fault, you know? I was doing this really, really awesome R&D thing. So, yeah, that's kind of nice. I've been uh, watching some of the Vikings shows in preparation for this. I think all of us have. Is that yeah. right? No. Yeah. I, I have. No. no. Not no. in preparation for the show, but just because it's an awesome show that you I should I was in watch. Norway once. <laughs> that's good. I actually Let's lived see. back in the Viking times. I'm like ah. about... 800 years old. I, I was in Norway once, too. Mm -hmm. Shannon, were you in Norway? Uh, nope. Sweden. Disappointing. So got. who yeah. is more prepared than who is the question. Oh. Yeah, that's the, that's the battle that we're playing before we actually start. Yeah. I go to Ikea a lot. Oh, shit. Like, not even, not even remotely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, lingonberries, that counts, right? Like, yep, yep, lingonberries, yeah. I read um, fam you know, totally uh, I know okay. I can say I can say yeah, it's not good at Gnorsk. Uh Swedish good. chef much? Yeah. Which means yeah. I don't I don't speak Norwegian. Jorgen, Jorgen. Oh. Sound like Swedish to me. Uh Shannon, back to the point at hand, which is uh <laughs> what 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 have you been up to recently? Have you been playing anything cool? Watching any cool shows other than uh other than Vikings? Uh, I actually got back into Marvel Heroes because I play it with my brother a lot, and uh, we've been doing that off and on for about two years now. And cool. uh, I went and saw the Avengers, and it was so amazing. And the pretty similar, I won't get into spoilers, but there's one character who feels a lot like a different character that's Omega level, we'll just say that. And so I went back to play a little bit of Marvel Heroes and get my fill on playing Phoenix. So, yeah. I did a lot of that, and um, I've been watching a lot of TV shows. I watched Black Sails. I don't know if you guys have that in the States, but we it do. is amazing. I, right? I am totally not familiar with this. It's a Maybe pirate it's not show. not in Canada. Dude, oh, it's man. pirates. It's like it's realistic Pirates of the Caribbean, just without all the, you know, magic stuff. It's it, awesome. It's so Does it have hand flapping? Is that it? Yeah. There's well, a little bit of hand Why is all the rum gone? Oh, why is all the rum gone? <laughs> Oh, it's all the rum gun. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, the rum. that's very common. Hand <laughs> <laughs> you look like Keith Richards doing that. I do. <laughs> oh, it's it's all the rum gun. Yeah. So, we, sound like, we sound like the Beatles, though. <laughs> John, <laughs> like why is all the rum gun? Why is all the rum gun? All right. Um, Shannon, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're watching Black Sails and that it's awesome. Um, now, we have a new member to the Roleplay family joining us. Krender, nice to meet you. Hey, how's it going? 
Um, I heard a rumor that you were really old. Yeah, I'm a, I'm 800. I actually grew up back in the uh, Norse uh, environment. Yeah, when you they you, moved. You were like there. Those were hard times. At the founding of Iceland. Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> Good. Those were really hard times. Almost um, as hard as when uh you know the Revolutionary War, but not quite. Which was worse? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have to say the Revolutionary War because the British really? were just intolerable. Okay, you know, all right. I know a lot of British people. Like Making Total Biscuit, friends around the know. world, it's Crendor. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you ever seen Total Biscuit? You know, just... Hey, that's tolerable, you that's know. true. He yeah. was on a show with me Tolerable. once, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah. You blocked or, it out. Uh, you blocked out the memory. Or, uh, uh, Sam Strippin. You're kind of Sam dragging Strippen, it back. another guy, just intolerable. You know? <laughs> Accurate. Uh, you know, that's why Those are the only two them. British people you know. I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I, but, I, uh, you know. Doesn't uh, Shannon live in, in British land? I do. We actually we actually kicked Strippin out because he was... Uh, he was too much of an asshole. Can you can you can yeah. you talk for me for a minute? <laughs> Just say anything. What? What? That no one no one who is British says what like what? what? No one no one says it like that. You're <laughs> you are you're the first wave of the American invasion, don't worry. I'm I Canadian. Tell. <laughs> Every, no, uh, the, no the, you're the you're North American, American you're, invasion. Yeah, Canada's from where? North America. American. It all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse all logic. Time. I'm okay so, with it. I'm Illuminati. Illuminati. Wonder, what, what have you been up to recently? I, 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 I have to confess, I, I haven't followed you before, but uh, I, I was taking a look at like some of your videos. You've got like a leveling series through World of Warcraft. I do have a leveling series. It's been going on two and a half years. That is a long time to reach the level cap, Krender. Yes, we're on episode you, you might be, You might not be doing it quite right. Probably I, not, but I, I don't like it. to do things the right way. Uh, okay. The right way is the boring way. Uh, I think okay. you're going to work out well on this show. Yeah. And so uh, I do that. I level in WoW. I have WoW machinimas I make. That's how I got started in the whole online internet uh, entertainment biz. Sweet. Yeah. And uh, I'm a frequent guest on the co-optional uh, podcasts and lounge. And, uh, you know. Do you ever do anything with any of the other role play members here? On this uh, I've streamed with Krender a couple times. Yeah, I've streamed with Maggie. Yeah. Yeah. I've done I beat him up in Grand Theft Auto V. Just punched the crap out of him. It, yeah, but only once. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think you guys are going to work well together on this show. Yeah, I've uh, you know hung out with JP a couple times. He's a really big nerd. Uh, but he's not here to defend himself right now, so it doesn't matter. So we can talk shit. Yeah. All right, let's, let's talk about JP. Like, okay, guys, let's get real. Yeah. No, no, no actually, we should probably start playing the game. All right. All right. Next next time. Not my stuff. Steven. <laughs> next next show. Steven, question. Yes. What does R&D mean? That's for the chat. Who wants to know? Wait. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Okay. Jesse, why? How interesting of you to ask. <laughs> um, R&D, it means research and development, which is just because, like, it, uh, as a show, uh, as a role play show, like most role play shows, pick one system and then play it basically perpetually until... They decide they need to change to a new story in that same system or something like that. So, um, like, uh, Stars Without Number will always be the system for Swan Song. But R&D, we play one system for a period of, like, six to eight weeks, and then or six to eight sessions, and then we try out a different system. So we've tried five systems so far, um, and this is our sixth, and I'm really excited to get started. So, uh, without further ado, I think we should hop right into, like... Introducing. Well, Chat uh, wants me to uh, say Cox and Crendor is a show I do with Jesse. Ah, uh, there you go, Chat. Are you happy, Chat? Good. Now that they're happy now. Now, now they to derail everything, Chat. Yeah. yeah. No, now, <laughs> all right. You know what? Let's, let's go to break. Well, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, okay. So we're playing a game, and it's called Sagas of the Icelanders. It's by a guy named Gregor Vuga. Um, and um, I just want to introduce it by reading you uh, an excerpt from the Saga of Burnt Njal. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Hold on, let me get some more fruit snacks and beer because I'm going to need it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to like this. Are you ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. What vengeance or help will I get from you, she said. House Cooled would have taken up a blood feud and avenged you if you had been the one to die. 
She took out the cloak in which Housecold had been slain and threw it over Flussy, and blood trickled down on him. Sorry, what? That's an excerpt from one of the sagas of the Icelanders. What was, so, her, what was, what was her name? Her name was, uh, no, this was, this was no, we don't know her name. She, her, she is only referred to as she. Jesse, who you is, gotta pay attention for this Who shit, is man. called Flussy? God damn. Who's oh, Flussy? Yeah, Flussy is, a, it's, a, it's another person. It's, it's a guy. It's a guy, it's a guy, <laughs> it's a guy who was battling Housecold and like, he killed Housecold, but Housecold would, no, never mind. You know what? We're moving. What a Flussy. All right, continue, please. <laughs> Um, so this is a game about, <laughs> about Viking settlers in Iceland, as described in the Icelandic sagas. And so this is like a time period from approximately the year 930, which was the year of the first national assembly in Iceland, to the year 1030. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by all cooperating to create player characters, non-player characters. We'll create all the relationships between them, and we'll also talk about like the structure of our farmstead and how we relate to each other. Um, it's important to note that in, in the saga era of, of the Icelandic society, gender was a really important thing. Like, it's, like men and women are absolutely not equal in Icelandic society. They, uh, they, have, an, they have an equality of respect, but they, they perform very different roles. So, like, um, male characters in sagas of the Icelanders and female characters in sagas of the Icelanders have explicitly different moves that allow them to do completely different things from each other. And the cool twist here that I'm really, really excited about is that our two men have agreed to play women characters and our two women will be playing men characters. So I'm, I'm super stoked to see how that plays like out. Like, that wasn't going to happen anyway. <laughs> I like yeah. that. It's a cool I mean, twist. <laughs> I was going to be a woman to begin with. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we're all on board and we're all hyped. Um, so, like, this game is a game, it's, it's powered by the Apocalypse. So, um, Maggie has played Apocalypse World and is familiar with the kind of rule set that this game is, is coming from. But I don't think that the rest of you have played Apocalypse World or Dungeon World. Correct me if I'm wrong. Shannon, have you played Dungeon World? I have not. Hmm. Okay, so, um, like, there's a couple of things that make it really, really different from a game like Dungeons and Dragons. So um, the, the biggest thing is that the entire game is just like a conversation. We'll never enter into like a battle-based, turn-based mode or anything like that. So like in a conversation, all of us are gonna take turns sharing the spotlight. Like we'll, we'll probably end up talking over each other and stuff, some, but really what we wanna do is be handing it off to each other uh, you know, as smoothly as we can. Um, the game is really entirely about the fiction of what's happening in the story. Uh, when and the way that you roll dice is that when you do something in the game world that triggers a move that you have, then you can roll dice to see the outcome. Uh, otherwise, if you don't have a move for it, you just describe what happens. So um, moves are a way of like mechanically guaranteeing that an outcome is going to happen. Otherwise, like if you say that you do something, whether or not it actually happens is kind of up to me. Uh, and I can just decide. But there are rules on my side of the game that keep me treating you guys fairly. Um, so if you don't have a move to do something, so like if you don't have a move to jump an icy crevasse, like you can still say, okay, you know, I take a running leap across the crevasse and I grab onto the other side. Um, you can still do that, but there's no way for you as players to force my hand unless you have a move. Um, so like almost all moves follow this format and uh, you all actually have a handout. So if you go and roll 20 up to the little newspaper thing uh, in the middle of the uh, upper right hand corner, the journal, and you click on the common moves, you can pop that out and see a whole bunch of like the things that everybody gets to do. And there's common moves that everybody can do, there's moves that only women can do, and there's moves that only men can do. You get all of the common moves and all of the moves for your gender. And almost all of the moves follow the following format. So looking at the very first one, when you tempt fate, roll, and you're always rolling 2d6. Roll plus weird. Weird is one of your stats. On a 10+, plus, you pull it off. On a seven to nine, you pull it off, but the fates gain a bond with you, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, and the MC can expend it on their behalf at any time. On a miss, misfortune strikes, and tempting fate means to do anything exceptionally dangerous, risky, taboo, or out of your league. Um, so the, the general structure of every move in the game is basically on a 10 plus, you get exactly what you wanted by doing the thing that you're doing, no matter what the move is. 
On a seven to nine, you get what you want, but there's some kind of drawback or limitation. It's not entirely what you want. You had to pay for it more than you thought you would have to. On a six minus, you don't get it. And the rules let the GM, me, the master of ceremonies, make things harder for you. So like to use a Dungeons and Dragons example, like in D&D, if you're picking a lock and you roll a three, then I would say, okay, well, you know, you don't pick the lock and that's all. But in a Powered by the Apocalypse game, if you are trying to pick a lock and you roll 2d6 and you get a three, I say, okay, well, you know, your torch starts guttering. And just as your torch is about to come out, you hear the scraping sounds of a troll coming along the hallway behind you. And I've actually made a move to make things harder for you because you failed. So there's, there's that. it's a way that, like, failure in these games keeps things moving forwards. But, but you get experience for those values, right? That's in Dungeon World. Experience oh, works different. Here? Experience yeah. works differently in, uh, in, in Sagas of the Icelanders. And we'll talk about that, too, because it makes it a really different game. Um, so some moves are going to give you a currency called Hold. Let's see if there's any in the basic moves. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so in the female moves, in the center column at the very bottom of this page, when you raise your voice and talk sense, roll plus versed, which is another one of your stats. On a 10 plus, hold three. On a seven to nine, hold one. Hold is like a currency, and you can spend it one for one to choose from the results of that move at some point later in time. So for, the, for, for this female move, when you raise your voice and talk sense, you can spend your uphold one for one to give advice on a favorable course of action or warnings against a course of action to those present. They gain plus one forward for following each piece of advice you give or minus one forward for doing any of the things you advise against. Um, so, like, let's cover that really quick. Taking, taking plus one forward means that you get plus one to the next roll. If you take plus one ongoing, that means that you have plus one until some condition ends. So, that's like the basic structure of the way this game works. Um, how many of you have read the chapter on Iceland in this book? I read a bit of it. Oh my god! Awesome. Good. Um, so I thought we would cover just like really quickly um, what the game is like because it's it's a little bit different from many games I've played. I had to really like sit down and read it a whole bunch and like think about it a whole bunch to wrap my head around it. And then we'll start making characters. Um, we might actually tackle character creation like at the start of the next uh, hour. But let's see how quickly we can get through this. So... Um, just to give you, you four and also our uh, chat viewers at home and, and YouTube, hello YouTube, um, some sense of like what the game is like. Uh, it's kind of like a Western because there's a vast frontier that's ready to be settled that hasn't been settled yet. And there's an internal pressure among the settlers to establish a society with rules and laws. There's an external pressure from the East to accept leadership and become civilized. But it's also very much not like a Western because there are no natives. There's, there's literally nobody in Iceland until the Vikings arrive. Uh, there's no gold rush. And there's no other natural resources or riches that would draw people to Iceland other than free land. Um, it's kind of like post-apocalyptic fiction because there's a couple of small communities of people who are trying to survive in a very harsh environment and build a new society without the structures from their old world. Um, but they're fiercely holding on to their ancestral traditions. But it's also very much not like post-apocalyptic fiction because there was no catastrophe and the rest of the world is still there and exerting its influence on many aspects of people's lives, even still. Um, it's kind of like fantasy fiction because there's like, there's brave female warriors, there's prophecies, there's lost heirs, there's bloody romances where people are killing each other in the middle of the night over love of a woman or a man. Um, Tolkien even borrowed pretty heavily from the various Icelandic sagas, but it's also very much not like fantasy because it concerns itself with real people in the real world and there's no explicit supernatural or fantastical element. Um, regarding that last point, like Icelandic society uh, back in the 900s or 1000s, um, people had very strong beliefs in the supernatural, but of course being in the real world, there were no actual land spirits or elves or trolls, but the Icelanders believed in them very strongly. Um, so 
like some some quick background on Iceland itself in 900 AD. Like we've mentioned, the country is completely empty and unpopulated until settlers arrive. There's no great natural resources here except for free land. Um, the settlers who have come to Iceland are mainly refugees and political dissidents who are fleeing the unification of Norway under King Haraldur. Um, and he claimed, like, what's what's kicked all of this off is King Haraldur was going around Norway uniting the land. And the way that he was doing it is he was, like, stealing uh, Othal, the, the land and possessions of kings, jarls, chieftains, and, and everybody for his own, and then appointing his own men to con collect taxes and rule on the law. So, like... He's basically infringing on the right of free farmers to own their own land, and many felt that that was being disregarded, and so dissatisfied, they came over to Iceland. Um, many people who came to Iceland were like wealthy landowners who wanted to, who could sort of like uh, finance a, a trip across the oceans, but not everybody was, um, and not everybody was in opposition to the king either. Some were just opportunists, um, and many people were just brought there as slaves. Um, so it's important also to, to recognize that there are no towns or villages and there won't be any for a couple hundred years. There's only scattered sort of farmsteads all around. So um, you four probably will end up being from the same farmstead or at least all living very close to each other. But the next sort of like beacon of civilization is probably like a two hour walk through the forests away. Um, there's also no ruling class. There's no standing army. The only sort of like um, judgment group is a cast of priest judges called Gothi. So, um, continuing on, there's lots of uh, like setting expectations. I think is is very important for a game like this. But uh, we're nearly to the end of it. So, current time 900 A.D. There's a king in the east. His name is King Harald of the Fair-haired. There are a few thousand people on Iceland right now, spread out of, over an untamed wilderness. There's no towns or villages, none for centuries to come. Family is the foundation of everything, of, of society. Um, most, most immigrants are coming from Norway, and many of them are returning from raids in the British Isles. There are many slaves being brought here. Many of them are Gaelic. Um, there is a general disdain for a centralized authority. Um, the legal code is in its infancy. There are no kings. Honor and tradition are very, very important to the people who live here, including yourselves. The land is a wild, craggy, barren, arctic landscape. There are lush valleys, uh, striking mountains, glaciers, volcanoes, lakes, waterfalls, geysers. Yeah, there are few trees, and what trees there are are very, like, craggy and misshapen. All timber has to be imported because there are no trees that are straight enough and strong enough to actually make uh, wood houses from, for example. Um, and many trees are being cut down to make pasture land. As far as natural resources that are available to you for, there's a lot of fish and birds along the coast. There are lush, uh, uh, rather, there, there are arctic foxes, rabbits, and small rodents inside the, the center of the landscape. There are no large native mammals. Whales will occasionally beach themselves, and these become valuable treasure troves of like meat, bone, oil. Um, oftentimes, these can be sources of conflict where someone has claim on you know a bay or the land or something, um, whereas someone else is uh, is opposing. Um, there are uh, farm animals that Norwegians have brought with them, that Vikings have brought with them. So that's like sheep and goats and cattle, mostly, and then with uh, some horses and dogs as well. Um, your homes are largely like stone and turf longhouses. So like, I think they're, they're like 20 meters long by 10 meters wide or something like that. Uh, and it's sort of like a, a central space for your entire family to gather. People eat meals twice a day, generally dairy, fish, meat, cereals, and vegetables. Um, people actually like to bathe. They keep themselves fairly clean. Um, they, gen they tend to either bathe indoors or in thermal springs. Um, tools and weaponry, like uh, there are many tools of pretty good quality that are available. Um, Icelanders are very good metal workers, or the good ore is very rare and hard to come by. As far as weapons, uh, many people use knives uh, or a short sword called the siax. I don't know how this is. I don't know how many of sax. these things are pronounced. Sax. That's what it's. That's what we In say. Horse, yeah, I cool. looked it up. Awesome. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, so the sax, the spear, or the axe. Um, they also occasionally use bows or a glaive-like weapon called, I don't know, the eight gear. Maybe. 
Um, swords are swords are very valuable and and more rare because they require high quality iron, um, and they're a sign of prestige and they're often handed down through the generations. Medicine is very simple and straightforward. There are herbs that are used to relieve pain or aid recovery from disease. Um, Traveling is usually done on foot or on ponies. There are um, wagons and sledges that are rare, but they're useful. Um, boats are used for hunting and fishing. Um, Drakkar longboats are used for warfare, and deep and wide canar are used for trading. And again, if you actually speak uh, Norwegian or Icelandic, I apologize for butchering your language. Um, faith and fate are very, very important to Icelandic society. When you are born, the Norns, the, the goddesses of fate, they immediately determine the time that you're going to die. And as a result of this, Northmen are fatalistic and pragmatic because they know they can't avoid their death. It was preordained when they were born. Um, those who die honorably in battle are called to Valhalla to drink with the gods. Magic, known as uh, Sather, is women's work. Um, there are many tales of giants, trolls, elves, and draugr. Landvater, which are the, like, the land spirits, they live in natural places, and being on good terms with them is regarded as being very important. Um, there is no proper organized religion, but worship of Thor, Odin, Freya, and Freya uh, is common. Hell represents the scary underworld and afterlife. Um, Loki is a prankster and a schemer. Christianity is becoming more known, and it's distrusted by many. Um, chieftain priests, called Gothi, preside over oaths, marriages, and other ceremonies. Um, there are annual sacrificial feasts called bloat that happen before winter, during midwinter, and in spring. Writing is done in the runic Futhark alphabet. Uh, words are often carved in stones, like standing stones, or wooden poles to commemorate the greatness of someone or to uh, shame people. And there's even a special shaming pole that people erect to bring terrible disgrace onto the target. This is called the Nithinger. Um, Pastimes are common, uh, games and competition, horseback racing, swimming, poetry, drinking. Uh, apparently they used to fight horses the way people now might fight chickens. So you like put two horses in the ring and then have them battle each other. Yeah. Uh, they would play ball games and wrestle. They would do storytelling, play the flute and the harp and sing. Um, they would uh, play strategy games like chess or a simpler version of chess where you're defending like a king with pawns called Hnefta Tafel. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> you, you guys know Hnefta Tafel. Of course. Yeah, I played it a couple times yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, easy. I was, yeah. I was like league, you know, in middle school, yeah. so. Um, gender and culture. Uh, men and women are equally respected, but their roles in society are narrowly defined. Um, women are more able uh, to take on men's roles. Like, that's more flexible for women. Um, effeminate men have no place in Norse society. Uh, regarding honor, honor is one of the most important parts of, of Icelandic culture. There is no greater insult to a man than to be known as ergi or effeminate. Without honor, an Icelander is nothing. For a man, being honorable means being brave, acting your gender, respecting your elders and your hosts and hospitality, following etiquette, and especially being a man of your word. It means you're reliable. Like, I was actually reading up about this. Apparently, Icelandic society went something like 275 years before the first civil war. And largely that's because Icelandic society, while they didn't have a centralized government, like, they had the social etiquette required to really strictly enforce behavior. Um, so, like, um, duels or material compensation for slights or insults or a breach of honor is really common. Um, happens all the time. Like uh, you, because like the courts of the land are, are just these sort of informal all things uh, that the Gothi preside over, um, it's kind of up to you to enforce the rulings that have been given or to enforce your honor. Um, on the other hand, women aren't as concerned with personal honor but it only takes one person to dishonor a whole family. Um, insults are considered very serious. Uh, oaths and curses are considered very powerful. Um, trading and pillaging. Uh, the Vikings were pillaging Europe uh, for dozens of years prior to this. Um, and they've also established well-established trade routes, some that reach all the way to the Byzantine Empire. 
Um, generally, Icelanders are exporting animal fat, skins, wood, sulfur, and falcons. And they're importing metal, cloth, slaves, food, and luxuries from foreign lands. Um, and that's kind of like the lore dump about what Iceland looks like back in this time. Uh, let's really quickly cover like um, mo money and how much money represents how many goods. So, uh, bills. yeah, exactly. Dollar dollar bills, y'all. Um, or no, I'm not gonna do it. Sorry. Uh, Silver coins. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna go something in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, so like. There's, there's like different denomination, bits, handfuls, pouches, and chests, and like uh, many bits is a handful, many handfuls is a pouch, many pouches is a chest, many chests is a shit ton. Um, so a bit of silver, yeah. <laughs> a bit of silver is enough to buy like enough homespun wool for a complete set of clothes, enough common furs to make a piece of clothing, a good metal tool, a month of food for a family, the fee to land a ship. A few bits of silver pays for a finished piece of clothing, a small farm animal, a weight of bog iron, a quality spear or axe, um, once off skilled or professional work. Many bits or a handful of silver pays for an ounce of gold, a season of labor, a major fine, a falcon or a dog, things like that. Um, a few handfuls of silver pay for like a larger metal tool, weapon or implement like a cauldron, a helmet or a mail shirt or a regular slave. Um, many handfuls or a pouch of silver plays for a healthy cow, uh, pays, pays for a healthy cow or horse, a sow with many piglets, a small flock of sheep or goats. A few pouches of silver pay for an exceptional slave, the fine for lying in court, a common sword, a plot of land, a golden arm ring. Golden arm rings are very common among men. Um, they're called oath rings and men often make oaths by the rings on their arms. Um, Many pouches or a chest of silver pays for eight cows or a free man's wear guild, which um, I think wear guild is like paying off the the death oath of someone or like something like that. Let me take a look. Uh, maybe I can find that during the break and clarify exactly what that is. Actually, Shannon, mm -hmm. you were so on the ball of looking up the pronunciation of, uh, of, that, you do that? of that word Why earlier. You can that? you, can you look up just... what wear guild is and tell us what it is? Look up the witch one? Weregild, W-E-R-E-G-E-L-D. Yeah, and then a few chests of silver will pay for it. The Weregild of an important man, like a Gothi bishop, foreign prince, or nobleman, a legendary sword, or a great treasure. So you want to know how really it's pronounced? Shitty slave. I want to know what it is. Um, it's <laughs> known as a man price. It was a value placed on every being and piece of property in the Salic Code. If property was stolen or someone was injured or killed, the guilty person would have to pay this wear guild. So basically, yeah. it's, it's blood money. It's the blood yep. price. Yeah, it's reparations. Cool. Um, good. So, yeah, uh, I think it's actually a good time to take our first break because um, when we come back, we're just going to get rolling on uh, like creating our characters. So we're all going to start talking about like who we are and how we came to Iceland and how we know each other and specifically how we're related to each other because the way you earn XP in Sagas of the Icelanders is you use a move that you have on a target who is a person you have a relationship with and once you've marked four of those relationships then you gain an advancement. Hmm. So it's, it's all about the relationship between you and the other people in society. Okay. So. Let's take that break. We'll come back in five minutes or so, and we'll get started with some character creation. Woo! 